Hello everyone and welcome to the good old gamer. So in the last video, we took a look at the RTX, whoa, almost pulled a Linus, and the RTX 4070. And my opinion on this hasn't changed. It's still no good. Uh, so we found out that the RTX 3080 made a heck of a lot more sense in today's market since you can get these on the secondhand market for under $300 pretty regularly. Even for the Win 3s, go for about $399. So yeah, makes no sense getting something that's slower and costs more money for frame gen. However, today there is a new challenger and that is the RX 7800 XT. This is a very popular graphics card from AMD. They're still pretty much sold out. We checked today on the live stream as of recording. Uh, and yeah, so these guys, you guys seem really interested in it. The community is buying this card. Now, is this one worth it or is it another toss? We'll see here in this video. So we're just gonna jump right in. We're gonna check out some benchmarks and then I'm gonna give you my thoughts. There's definitely a few key things with the RDNA 3 or perhaps with later drivers that I found very surprising and it's a very good step in the right direction for AMD. So this video today is actually brought to you by a supporter of the channel. I just wanted to give a shout out um, his company. He's actually an indie developer and he likes the channel. And he's like, hey, you wanna test out a 7800 XT? I was like, sure, absolutely. He's like, I'm gonna send you the Nitro because you said on uh, the Techonomics podcast that you that's the one that you want. So I checked it on out and I would just want to thank him for that because uh, that's super awesome. It's super nice. This community is amazing. Uh, the next video I'm going to be doing is also member supported, sent over a cooler. He wants to see how it performs next to my AIO. So you guys are absolutely amazing. And I just want to thank all of you guys, uh, everybody who smashes the like button, everybody who subscribes, all of that. Thank you guys so much for all your support. And you get to make cool videos like this possible. So let's go ahead and check out those benchmarks. So we're going to kick things off with 1440p high benchmarks. Uh, these are newer games, games that came out last year or this year. And on this one, we're going to be comparing the RTX 4070 in the dark green, the RTX 3080, which is in the light green, then the RTX or the RX 7800 XT. This is the stock nitro, so it's not stock stock, but stock for this graphics card. And then the overclock 7800 XT. And we're going to see how they compare. So kicking things off with Ratchet and Clank, this is one where we saw the RTX 4070 pulled ahead of the RTX 3080, the only instance of that, by the way. Uh, we can see here the 4070 is actually ahead of the out-of-the-box Nitro uh, 7800 XT, but once you overclock it, look at that. It takes a commanding lead in this game and leaves the RTX 3080 in the dust. So you can tell that this game is definitely heavily optimized for these newer graphics cards as Ampere just can't keep up in this one title. However, just like with the RTX 4070, that goes away pretty quickly. So moving on over here to Tiny Tina, which is really a DirectX 11 title. We can see the RTX 3080 definitely outpaces the out of the box 7800 XT, but when tuned and overclocked, the 7800 XT does come in with a little bit of a lead. And then we go to Warhammer. It's kind of a very similar story, except the 3080 is a little bit ahead. Hogwarts, very much the same sort of story. And then we move on over here to Spider-Man. This game, NVIDIA does have the lead. There's just no denying that. It's just superior in this particular title, uh, which, you know, a lot of people would say that this is CPU bound. Well, not so much as the NVIDIA overhead plays no factor here. Then we have God of War. You can see the 4070 fell down really bad in this game. However, the 7800 XT pulls ahead. So this is a win for the 7800 XT. Then you have Cyberpunk, which is a little bit ahead. Last of Us is just a wash across the board. Then Starfield, the uh, 7800 XT is ahead. This is a game we will need to retest in the future. Uh, I think that this will even up a bit, but it's definitely a win for the AMD card at this point in time. Then Xenia, this is a big one that I did want to highlight. So if you are into emulation, this is 1440p in Xenia. We have the 4070 and uh, 3080, pretty much the same, around 60 FPS. The RX 7800 XT comes in right around the 70 FPS mark. Now that's not a lot, but 10 FPS at these numbers is a big difference. This is far enough ahead over 60 FPS that you could lock the game to 60 and have a very smooth experience. And then we can take a look over here at Plague Tale. It's basically a wash overclock to overclock. 
Now, just like in the last video, we're going to take a look at some older games running at 4K high or very high or ultra, just one notch down from their max settings. So starting off with uh, Gears 5, where the RTX 4070 fell down real hard, the 7800 XT holds its own, but the 3080 does come out with a slight win on this one. Moving up to Far Cry, we flip around. The 7800 XT, slight win. And then Arkham Knight, the 4070 actually did quite well here, but the 7800 XT does come out with the win on this one. Metro is a tie. And then we also have Shadow of Mordor is a tie. Now then taking a look at all 16 games, the RTX 4070 comes in with a 1% low average FPS of 85 across all the games. The RTX 3080 comes in at 91 and the 7800 XT comes in at 95. So there's a wide gap between the 7800 XT and the RTX 4070 and the RTX 3080 is hanging in there being a little bit slower, but not much. So that's a very impressive showing from this card right here. So I was very impressed with its performance. It's basically a 6800 XT RTX 3080 level card, as you just saw. Uh, as the 6800 XT, when I tested it, it's a 3080. They're like for like in terms of performance. This is right there. So when this originally came out, I was like, there's no way this will match an or, or a uh, 6800 XT. And the reason for that is... As of thus far, RDNA 3 CU to CU hasn't been able to keep up. Now, this graphics card is allowed to push all the way up to 310 watts. And when you push it and undervolt and use that power and clock all the way to about 3 gigahertz, in modern games, we're running at about 2950 on average with this card, which is ironically about the same we had the 4070 running at. Um, still, this card is able to push much, much higher than its out-of-the-box factory settings. So in reality, if you fully tune one of these, you're probably looking at a 4070 Ti level, maybe even close to a 7900 XT out-of-the-box, their reference design. So if you do get one of these, make sure you do tune your system and you'll get a much better experience out of it. So overall, I saw about 10% faster than the uh, just out-of-the-box uh, nitro numbers, so if you compare that to something like stock, which is probably another 5% below that, so you're looking at probably about 15, maybe 20% over a reference design using a good AIB model. Now, let's talk about the surprises on this one. So what I do when I test out especially Intel and AMD graphics cards is I know what games seem difficult for them to run. They have issues loading them or just problems in general. My biggest complaint with AMD graphics cards has been RPCS3, which we don't test for graphics cards. It's more of a CPU benchmark. But I'm happy to say that the games, Trouble Games for RDNA or for AMD graphics cards has been resolved, whether that's on RPCS3's side, whether that's driver side, or whether that's the RDNA 3 architecture. I don't know. But this ran every game that... Just a couple months ago, RDNA 2 cards couldn't. So that's fantastic. And that's a big deal for a lot of people out there who want to save a few bucks, don't care about ray tracing, would like an AMD card, but emulation is important to them. So you don't have to worry, at least with RDNA 3, you can use for emulation. Every emulator works on AMD now inside of Windows. It always worked in Linux, but now inside of Windows. And as you saw with Xenia, and that's why I made sure to highlight that, you actually get a superior experience. So if emulation's a big thing for you and you want higher resolution emulation, so 1440p Xenia, you're not getting 4K, you need a 7900 XTX or a 4090 for that. But for 1440p, this is going to do very well. Um, and then for RPCS3, that's all CPU bound. So you can run 4K, no problem on a card like this. So that's really good news. Now, a couple of older games that I tested that... AMD seems to not do so well with. One of them is Slave Zero. That's a game that, well, YouTube seems to hate, so I can't talk too much about it. But that particular game um, it still can't run. It does not run at all on here. It keeps crashing. Even using PC Gaming Wiki's fixes, it still does not work. Uh, and then Star Trek Armada is another one that I test. That game does load up, but the background, meaning like you're in space, you just see ships. There's no like planets and stuff in the background. That does not work using the graphics card. So it's close, it's better than crashing. It's doing better than it did, but it's still not there. Um, so those are really some of the trouble games that I test, I spot check 
This is definitely a step in the right direction. And if you don't play really old games, so pre-2005, uh, so if you're just 7th gen DirectX 9 games or newer, AMD is going to do just fine, which is great. So I'm really glad that they resolved the issue with RPCS3 because now I can recommend these for people that are doing that instead of just going, you have no option. So that's fantastic. Now, as far as the Nitro here goes, I really, really like this graphics card. This never ever, ever saw 70 degrees. And this was inside of a case, closed. Uh, so closed side panel, it is a mesh side panel, so it does get good air. But still, it was in there, never saw 70 degrees, even at 310 watts pegged. So there's really no reason to pull your power down. Um, you should push your clocks as high as you can on here, and you do get scaling. So no reason not to do it if you buy a high-end model like this with a good cooler. I really like the fact they have this nice, uh, basically it's just RGB on the side. It looks really good in the case. Great airflow here. Uh, I personally don't like this like indention here. I'd rather get more airflow. And I mentioned this on the live stream, but one of the things that I do like about the NVIDIA cards is their shorter PCB. And then instead of just this little cutout here, you get pretty much this whole area over here pushing air through and you do get a little bit better airflow. But this thing is massive overkill for this graphics card. You could easily push four, 450 watts through this and it would still keep it cool. So yeah, if you just want the best, this, this is gonna be it right here. The nitros are typically the top of the line for the AMDs. Uh, and this comes in at like a 10% premium. It's only $560. So you spend a little bit more and you're going to get higher clocks because it keeps the GPU, the actual GPU core, so cool that uh, it, you're able to run lower voltages at higher frequencies. So I could strongly recommend going with the Nitro here, but I'd say any of the higher end models would be just fine. And there's some smaller ones that would do just fine too. You just won't get as high of a clock speed and it probably won't run quite as well. Now, the big question is, how does it compare against the RTX 3080? Now, this guy right here, we were talking about it on the live stream today. This is probably going to become the new RX 580. If you guys remember, not this last mining boom, but the one before that in two, uh, 2017, AMD graphics cards were what miners wanted. So they bought tons and tons and tons of them. And then when that ended, well, they dumped them. Well, it's kind of the reverse this time around. They bought tons and tons and tons of NVIDIA graphics cards, and now they're dumping them. So the RTX 3080 was definitely one of the prime candidates for what people wanted. And there are just so many of these out in the wild looking for homes. So I really don't think that anything is going to be able to beat this in terms of price and performance for a, quite some time, to be honest. Until this isn't fast enough to do 1080p anymore, I just don't think that this can be beat. There's too many of them that need to be sold. So anytime something comes out, prices get pushed down. They're even cheaper today than they were. And when the uh, RX 60 or 7800 XTs are in stock, I'm sure the price will continue to fall as the used market will have to compete with these. So this is still the superior option. It's only a smidge slower. This uses about 400 watts of power. That uses about 310. So it does use more power. And then the RTX 4070 uses about 190. So easy way to look at it is 400 watts, the 7800 XT 300 watts, and the RTX 4070 200 watts. Pretty fair, right? But at the end of the day, is it worth saving 100 watts over the course of a year? or $120 up front or so, or possibly even more. That's a tough call. If you're using like a really small case or a poorly ventilated case, yeah, the power consumption is a big deal, but then you might want to go with the RTX 4070 and pay the premium because that draws even less power. But as far as the 7800 XT goes, and particularly the uh, Nitro here, the Sapphire Nitro, I can definitely recommend this for anybody who wants something that's going to last a little bit longer. So if you want a graphics card that you're going to skip next generation and potentially even skip the following generation, it might be worth spending that extra $100 to go this route long term due to things like the VRAM, the fact that it is a newer architecture. AMD is obviously going to be optimizing this longer than say Nvidia probably with Ampere and so on and so forth. Personally, the power draw thing isn't a real issue for me, but if you get maybe one of the smaller 7800 XTs, one of the dual fan ones, that makes a lot more sense going with something that draws a lot less power, right? Under that condition, that makes sense. So I, this does make sense in this world. 
It's just going to be very difficult to recommend most graphics cards over the RTX 3080, largely due to the fact that there's such an oversupply out there and prices are just going to be really good on those for a long time. So if you want the absolute best value, go with the 3080. But if you want something a little bit newer, you want something that's going to last a little bit longer, I can easily recommend this for anybody who's just not going to be running super, super old games. And uh, we were actually discussing here today, it might actually be worth just going this route and building just like a cheapo Windows XP retro machine for a lot of these more difficult older games to run because then you just don't have to worry about it, right? So as long as it can do DX9 on up, you'll be good. And that's something I might do here on the channel is just put together a cheapo Windows XP build and just be like, all right, so that's where I'm going to play my old games. Um, that's kind of inspired by my buddy Phil over at Phil's Computer Lab. He did a cool video today, kind of got me thinking about it. So um, if you want to see something like that, let me know if you're interested in playing older games on older hardware, or if you think, nah, I just want to make sure that I can get one PC, one system, and I want it to do everything. Well, unfortunately, NVIDIA still has a lead and an advantage. And and that's okay as long as AMD is competitive on pricing and features like they are here. So I would definitely take this over an RTX 4070, no question, hands down. You saw the difference there, 95 FPS versus 85 FPS on the 1% lows. That means it's 12% faster with more VRAM, higher memory bandwidth, which honestly will last you a lot longer um, for less money. It's kind of a no-brainer there, and none of these graphics cards, I would say, are... RT level, so that's not really a factor in my opinion. But alrighty, guys, I really enjoyed this. I'm very happy our PCS3 works. Uh, this is a really nice card. It's well built, and like I said, for the super premium model, 10% more money really isn't that bad, which is really nice to see. Uh, you know, if you look at something like the what was it the ASUS Strix 4090, they want an extra like 400, 500 dollars for that. And then if you look at the Matrix, what do they want like three grand or something? It's just way too much. I'm cool with spending an extra 10% for, you know, the top of the line of that sort of GPU line. But because uh, even at that price, you're paying bottom basement 4070 price and you're getting top of the line. So I think that that's pretty cool. So I can definitely recommend this card. There are affiliate links down below if you do want to pick it up. So let me know if you've picked one up, if you enjoy it, if it's doing the job for you, if you've run into any issues. I'm always kind of curious for you guys. I have my use cases, you guys have yours, and we're different. Um, but overall, I'd say AMD is like 99.9% .9 of the way there. Whereas a few weeks ago or a few months ago, I would have said they were like 98% of the way there. So they've definitely made some strides uh, in terms of game compatibility. I'm super happy to see that. So yeah, I can recommend it if you want to go this route. The RTX 3080, also a great route if you want to go there and you're not afraid of used. So, so throughout this video, I talked about my live streams, which I do on Fridays at 4 p.m., uh, Eastern time. If you're not subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button, slam that notification bell, and this way you can join live, as obviously we do a lot of chatting and cool stuff over there, and I really enjoy communicating with the community on a regular basis. Uh, you can also communicate with me directly whenever you want if you hit the little join button down below or the Patreon link in the video description that gets you access to the Discord, and we chat about all this sort of stuff throughout the week and it's a good time. If you want to join the tech bunker where nobody's really that crazy and everybody's pretty helpful and nice, we have a really good community. That's the best way to do it. It does help support the channel as well, so that's a nice side effect. And if you are going to pick up any of these, please use the affiliate links down below. That does also help support the channel. I really want to thank the community for all their support, and I want to thank uh, the supporter who helped make this video possible by sending over the 7800 XT. That's really awesome, and I'm really glad that we were able to test this out, and I'm actually really glad that I'm able to recommend it. Finally, an AMD product that I can recommend. It took a while, but we got there, guys. So thank you so much, guys. Hope you have a great day, and I will catch you guys in the next video.